On today's episode of the Badass 2000, we dive into the valve train and replace some retainers. Why? Well, the AP1 retainers are known to crack. We don't want to drop a valve and blow this beautiful motor up, so we've got some work to do. Let's get to it. Pete's got some work to do. Step one, obviously, is to remove the valve cover. Next, we've got to pull the cams out, which is actually really simple on this motor. Uh, that's all so that we can get to the retainers underneath. Uh, I've had a practice run at this already, so I know the sequence for tightening and, and loosening the bolts to the cams. So I'll just follow that sequence. And it's from what? Outside in? Yeah, you tighten from the inside out. So to loosen it, I'll do it in the re reverse order. So outside in. And I'm just going to crack them loose. And then I'll... Yeah, there's probably like three steps you're supposed to do it in. Yeah, something. when you torque them down, there it's, it's like a you know, a stepped process, but I'm just going to loosen them and then I'll gently gun them out just because they're long and it'll take me all day otherwise. <laughs> Is that a long enough extension there? Well, I like to use long things, Peter. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to leave these in here so we don't... It's probably a good idea. We can pull it out in one go. Yeah, don't want to get them mixed up. And I'm using a wobble for no reason either. There you go. Just to make life harder on you. Exactly. Oh man, it's so much easier now, Pete. Look at that. Why didn't I think of that before? Sometimes it pays off to listen to your counterpart, huh? That's right. Oh, look at the precision. One. I'm like a surgeon here. Did I miss that one? I think I did. These are all nice and loose and uh, they're numbered so they can only go back in the way we uh, take them out. This one's got the, a one on it there and the arrow points towards the front of the motor. So even I won't be able to get them wrong. Thank you, Honda. But we'll still put them over here in the order that they came That's off. That's right. Okay. Don't mess around here. Oh, PT missed a bolt. Oh, and I'm blaming PT because you know when the camera wasn't on, he was he was messing with my work. <laughs> You're crazy. It definitely wasn't me. That You're that crazy. Oh, really? Like, oh, come on, DP, come on. You gotta be loose, man. They're loose. I guess that guy's just—it's probably wedged in there on the cam. Yeah, it's just that side's a little tight. There you go. Right. Two, three. More to go. This is the part in the comments section where you tell us we should be upgrading our camshafts. And we did actually look at that. We did. But, we thought uh, about it long and hard, we, uh, but ultimately said screw it. We didn't want to spend money on cams because these OEM cams just seem to make really good power from what we saw online. And um, Instead we put some money into a 70 mil exhaust system, a yes. three inch system. That's right. With no catalytic converter. That's right. Cause Cause screw you, Mother Earth. Well, because <laughs> everybody was chirping us about that too, so. <laughs> exactly. Well, the internet tells us that three inch exhaust really does make power on this car. Well, we're gonna find out. So we will find out. And uh, we're also gonna make a fancy carbon fiber air box for our ITBs, so that we can properly route some cold air so it'll be a carbon box with a, you know, a proper racing spec hose off what, of it. What are you talking about? That's not a racing spec that, hose? That's a dryer duct. I, I've seen that on that race cars. Come on. For $6. So we're going to put a proper one on there. I spent too long there. routing that to get rid of it now. Oh, it's coming out, buddy. <laughs> your zip tie work and your duct tie, duct tape work was good, but it's still coming out. This, on the other hand, is not coming out. All right. All right. So... I think we can just pop those cams out of there, right? I think so. They're probably not going to be super cooperative, but we'll see. There's one. Ooh, that's some muscle. Bam. So we should also mention that we're not changing the retainers on the exhaust side because the exhaust cam has left, less lift and duration and they don't seem to crack the retainers on this side of the motor. Every reported failure that we could find on the internet was on the intake side only. So we're only changing the retainers on the intake side. So we're really just taking the exhaust cam out 
for the fun of it. For sure. Yeah. No, nah, because it's going to be in the way when we yeah. put our fancy uh, valve spring compression tool on there. Exactly. Yeah, we'll get it out of the way. So, anyway, this cam is in good shape. We'll show you the lobes on the intake cam, though, and they're looking a little worn. Uh, but it's just surface wear. I don't think it affects the, the cam's performance any. So there's your intake cam. Now if you get a close look at like the big lobes, those are the VTEC lobes, the big boys. You can see there's some like wear yeah. on the surface, but it doesn't, it has no, like you can't feel it in the, in the surface. So I think it's just, we're sticking with it. It's just, we're ripping tech so hard, Pete. I know we rip it's, tech it's so hard works. that we've worn that lobe a bit, but whatever. I don't think we've worn it out. So uh, one of the ways the guys on the internet say to check for cracked retainers is to lift the rockers up and, and see if the, the tip of the, the, the valve has dropped down a bit. So typically they sit up a little, a little proud of the retainer here. And if it's cracked, they'll start to slip down. To, to us, that's a totally unreliable yeah, way to try to check for this. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Because if it was slipping, then the valve would be open. Yeah. I mean, it just And they crack on the wobbly. underside. You can't see the cracking from the top side. We'll show you in a sec where they tend to crack. It's kind of around the neck of the, the underside of the retainer. So to me, looking for them to be dropped down is kind of pointless. You need to take them out and really inspect the underside to get a proper look. And if you're taking them out, you might as well replace them. Exactly. So that's why we ordered the AP2 retainers, which are a more robust design that we'll show you in a sec. All right, PT's busted out his handy dandy valve compressor or valve spring compressor here. Yeah, that's right. This is a Blue Point branded valve spring compressor. And I'm hoping it's gonna work on here. It should. Yeah. It's pretty much like a universal setup, which we'll show you in a second once I get this thing bolted on. All right, PT got out the magic wand here. Slides through there, which we'll start off with it in the middle to see if that's the ideal spot. Right, because you can adjust the, the these mounts compressor correct. back and forth a bit on the slotted bolt yeah, holes. And then that'll go through there, and then we'll line this up and see, we should uh, have good leverage here. Yeah. So that's kind of the gist of the tool. So right on, right on, right on, that'll work. Press the spring, pop the keepers out, good to go. I think this is a good time to mention how hot it is. It is at hot. At the shop. We, uh, six months ago, were complaining about how cold it is, yes. and today it's about 32 degrees Celsius um, with humidity at about 40, and we have no moving air here. Yeah. So, uh, excuse the sweat running off the top of my forehead. It's a good look, buddy. I've taken the hose out of our leak down tester and connected it to the air compressor hose, so we have about 120 PSI in the combustion chamber right now. And our valve spring compressor tool is working well. However, as you can see, the valve is still being compressed and opened. And from a little bit of reading online, we figured out that the keepers are actually caught on the retainer. So no matter how much pressure we force into the combustion chamber, the same thing's gonna happen over and over, which is it's gonna open the valve. So our plan of attack is going to be to kind of just like smash this with a hammer with a socket and a hammer gently kinda, smash Peter, well, gently. no 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 i'm gonna hammer gonna go smash the shit out of this come on of course <laughs> gently smash it and uh and free the keepers yes at which point we'll be able to remove it with ease unstuck the keepers bro as you can see we've stuffed some uh paper towel down into the the head here so that if we have keepers flying around that they don't go down to an oil passage or something. So that's just a precautionary measure. Time to get the hammer out. So here goes nothing. Hammer time, bro. Hopefully I got it lined up. I don't know, DP. Yeah, it never feels good to hammer on a valve train, does it? No, but I'm not sure if it's actually doing much of anything. Yeah, well, that's what that guy was saying on 
the SGKF form, it's really hard to tell if they've come loose. But you got to just keep trying until, with the compressed air, you see that it's freed up. All right, PT, with enough hammering, looks like you pop one loose. Yes, I did. So you just got to be all Thor-like with the hammer. And now look at this. Here we go. So I'm going to reach in here. A magnetic tool helps pull that keeper off. Spring detentions, and voila! Ooh, look at that. M -m -m magic. M -m -m magic. And we'll take this retainer off. Is the part where PT does his happy dance, or what? I don't really dance, you so don't do I'm happy just going to be really happy that this came off. Ken Wagon, can you do a happy dance for us? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> what I have in my left hand is the AP1 retainer, and in my right is the AP2. And thankfully, it doesn't look like we have any cracking on our AP1. Um, it's really difficult to tell the difference between the two, actually. But if you look really closely, the AP2 is just a hair taller. And after some research, it's actually two grams heavier, which is what makes it more robust. So we're going to swap these over, use some new keepers as well, just to be on the safe side. And uh, that should solve our problem of worrying about having crack retainers. But we have seven more to do, so we may find one, maybe hopefully, so you can see what they actually look like. If not, we'll uh, show you a picture off the internet of what they look like. I'm gonna drop the AP2 retainer in there. I'll get my spring compressor tool ready. And this is kind of where the fun part happens, is putting these tiny keepers in here is always a bit of a bitch to get in. I know this because I did it on my SR20. Yeah. I recall there being a fair bit of swearing going on. Yes, indeed. See, I have one side in. Push that back up. Oh, man, this bloody ass. Look at this. What happened? It's magnetized. Oh, the, the tool is magnetized? Yes, the tool is magnetized. Ah, oh. oh, PT. We got, the struggle is real here, man. Well, at least we Who figured out. Who the hell magnetized my pliers? Well, Ken does have superpowers. I'm going to blame it on Ken. <laughs> All right. Take two here. Mm -hmm. PT's now got two hands on the job. Let's hope it makes a difference. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Holding. Yeah, go. Bring it up. Oh, fucker. <laughs> I had it. It dropped out. See? Uh, Split second. Bring it back up. I gotta regroup. Take 10. All right, bring it back up. Yes. Woohoo! There we go. One down, seven more to go, and it's gonna be a lot of cursing <laughs> from me. Oh, yeah. So after doing four of these, I figured out the best way to get one of the keepers out is you really need to hit it hard. And you have your keeper. So usually what happens is one of them pops out so you know you're good. Just push the seat down, come in. Second one comes out. There you go. Retainers off. Okay. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice and slow. Hold it right there. Use that muscle. Don't bring it up. I'm shaking. Shaking like one a quick one on road picture. Yeah, bring it up. Lock and load. Look at that. Bam. How fast was that? 20 that seconds? Was, uh, 20 seconds, PT. Yeah, 20 versus seconds. the uh, 10 minutes it took me to do the first one. You're full pro spec now. I'm getting there. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, let's stop right there. Yeah, bring it back up. Slow, 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 slow. Yes. Nice. Up. We're good. 
Sweet. Lock it in place. Look at that, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for the help, Ken. Yes. Thanks for the help, Dave. Don't give him a high <laughs> five. He sat around doing nothing. Come on. Come on. Come on. So we're going to put the cams back in. We will, through the magic of editing, do that now. Thanks to the magic of S2KI.com, we've got our torque sequence, and we know our torque spec is 16 foot-pounds. I think I might have said 35 before. It's 16, which on an inch-pound torque wrench is 192 inch-pounds. So we're going to torque these cam caps down and throw on the valve cover and go rip some tech. Show us the order. Yeah, so you do you basically work, like we said earlier, you work from the inside out. And I'm not going to go to full torque. I'm just going to kind of tighten them down little by little. Once I've got them all snug, then I'll torque them. To do a valve lash adjustment job, you're going to want at the very least a feeler gauge. This is eighth thou, which is what the recommended lash is on the intake side of the S2000. And what you're gonna maybe wanna purchase, I don't know if you do this quite often, it's worthwhile, is an actual valve adjustment tool. Uh, it's pretty handy. What it does is it drops right onto the valve lash adjuster and you can set the lash with the screwdriver and then tighten it with the wrench. But as you can see, this is a 13 mil, so it's not for this application which Dave unfortunately forgot his at home. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the old tried and true wrench and screwdriver method. Um, I've already gone ahead and set this cylinder for top dead center. So you can see both lobes are pointing outwards. And what you'll do is you'll take the feeler gauge and slide it in underneath. I can get it in there. So you might be too tight already, so let's try that again. So the feeler gauge doesn't want to fit, so what I'll do is loosen it a bit. There we go. So now we've got the feeler gauge in there, and what you do is you just tighten. So see, it's too tight now. Feeler gauge doesn't want to, want, doesn't want to slide out, so I just loosened it just enough where now I've got the slightest bit of play. It's, there's a bit of friction on it, but that's where I'm at. And then I'll come in with my wrench while holding the screwdriver straight, tighten it up, and now I'll check, and there you go. We've got eight thou play. So it's as simple as that. All right, PT's moved over to the exhaust side here. What's the spec over there, buddy? Uh, we've got a 10 thou uh, feeler gauge on the exhaust side. So right. it's not the same. Again, the internet has uh, told us this, so we're going to believe it. Well, the shop manual confirms that it's... Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't the internet then. No, no. Uh, now I feel much better. Yeah, you got you to gotta check your sources, right? Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's 8 to 10 thou on the intake side and uh, 10 to 11 thou on the exhaust side. Those are the, the factory specs. So we're going on the tight end of the range, which gives us a little bit more lift. Uh, it's kind of like the performance valve adjustment, if you want to call it that. <laughs> sure. That's what I used to do in my old Honda racing days, max that out. In fact, back in the old Michelin uh, Honda race days, the guys used to run like two or three thou super, super tight clearances to basically cheat some more lift out of their cabs. Wow. Yeah. It's how competitive that series was. Well, we're not going to be doing any of that. No. We're sticking with the uh, proper specs here. And so far, this is much better than the valve retainer replacement job yeah that's a nasty job i will job. say that no hammering on keepers and retainers that's anymore. right all right so let's double check these here real quick 10 thou clearance and 10 thou clearance we're good we're moving on sweet our final thing to finish off today is to put the valve cover back on here she definitely is a tight she is a tight fit fit this actual just the way we like it and it's uh yeah it's all firewall clearances yeah it's that 
got the loom back there, yeah, but yeah. there's like a glove. Look at that. Man, prospect. Now you gotta be careful putting it on those uh, spark plug tubes, bro. I see what you mean. Don't nick those up. I, I see may have experience what with that. You mean? Yeah, you just push them down though, and they seem to. Yep, they're a tight fit. <sighs> Some shiny new valve cover grommets going on there. Why do we buy new ones, Pete? Why would we do that? That seems like an we have excessive expenditure. Boatloads of money to just burning the money, burning our burn poop. away. That's right. Actually, I lost one when I removed the valve cover. It fell into the engine bay somewhere. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully not somewhere where it's going to do any damage. And we searched and searched and couldn't find it. So you have to buy these. Forty dollars later. Yeah, it's a forty dollar pack that you have to buy. You can't buy one at a time, or one at one piece. You got to buy the whole set. And it comes with like, the valve cover seal, and yes, yeah, so it's like a big kit you got to buy for forty dollars for dropping one stupid thing. Damn it, Ken Wagon! What are you doing? All right, PT, it's the moment of truth. This is the moment of truth. See if I haven't had luck lately with <laughs> automobiles starting after I've been working on the engine, as the old SR20 has proven. But uh, yeah, I think we're all good to go. And ready? I'm ready. The battery's, battery's dead. dead. Of, course. Uh, of course the battery's dead. Oh, battery. All right, you? take two, buddy. Let's see if this thing fires up. That's your fingers. Ooh, ooh. that's it we're done this episode is over i gotta go take a goddamn shower <laughs> i thought you were gonna say something else that starts with an <laughs> not a chance my man that's it shower for me and bedtime i'm exhausted this heat is killer i'm going for a swim oh lucky you okay rolling Woo. it's it hot as balls god damn i'm sweating like a all right pig on a spit here do, 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 do. all right who's starting this off pt New keeper. Holy shit. You ever seen that movie uh, CB4? Yeah. CB4 sweat from my balls. <laughs> so that should be playing right now in the background. Yeah, we could play some music. Uh, we're shooting a video. That's exactly what uh, I have going on.